back in the <coughs> late 90s and the, in the uh, early 20s, or early 2000s, <laughs> what, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> the early I'll give it up. Uh, <laughs> you know, the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, and by the time 2000 came around, uh, the use of condoms and, the, and talking about condoms were, were widespread in high schools, and in the 80s it wasn't that way. So this artist, to reflect the time, he filled a condom up with eggs and made a farm of it. And they, and they mass produced that, so that reflects that time. Uh, 2005, when all the computer servers were rushing to see who had the fastest service, DSL, competing, this is called the fast base because it looks like it's running and it's blurred like a cartoon strip. They have this in five sizes. I'm not compulsive, so I just bought one. <laughs> so each one of these groupings represent a different time frame in, the, in, the, in society. Uh, the, the two up here, behind Philip Sweat, how you doing? <laughs> doing good? Uh, those are called polio vases because they look like chickens with no heads. That's the title of the polio, which is Spanish for chicken. And uh, the ones over here are studio vases. They're one of a kind. They have artist initials on them, but from the 60s and 70s, there was no way to do research on them. So, uh, so any questions? Anything I left out that you'd like to What know? about the jelly beans? The ones, oh, yeah. the, the, the candy counter. Yeah. Those are from the uh, hot lava days, the hippie days, the psychedelic days, LSD days, and uh, bright colors. Um, maybe getting the Andy Warhol pop colors. And um, we grouped them all together and we decided to look like a candy counter. Mm -hmm. But there, there are various uh, companies. Some of them are studio bases and some of them are uh, auto ceramics. Uh, they did the big fat lava green one over there in the corner too. It was a, a pottery company. Anything else? Jimmy, I'm certain that you probably don't have a favorite piece, but within each variety of collection, do you have a favorite? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, you want me to point those out and why? Well, it's going to be because of the color and shape and form, because I'm not interested in really who made them. I just like the color and the shape and form. I like these a whole lot in the back. First and Bird Vases. Uh, it was also, she also, well, the company also made these. I keep thinking Diane First and Bird, but I'm sure she's a uh, family in Germany. But the First and Bird Pottery Company made these real sophisticated vases. And uh, these to me are the height of organic sophistication. They, they resemble cocoons, but yet they're abstracted. And uh, in these vases right here, I'm partial to this little fella, excuse me, right here. And this looks like a chess piece. I like that one. And uh, this is one of my all kind of favorites. Right here. I'm going to lift it up. To me, it looks like it's been in the woods buried for like 15 mm -hmm. years with the moss and the lichen on it. So I like that one a whole lot. And I like this little group here. These are all studio bases made by the artists. The way they go into the shape and the form, everything just ties together. The bright colored one, I like the, the blue in the middle. That's why I put it in the focal point. In Germany, they don't use the word emphasis or focal form, they use the word eye point in a room. If you see something in the room that really strikes your eye, that's called the eye point. So, uh, and then I have some of my other charities too, but my mouth is <laughs> All right, any other questions? Well, I'll be glad to answer questions. Okay, I want to know, when you first started looking online, which first one did you start? Uh, or did you start a certain? You know, I think it was at that level. The top the ones, the ones with the drippy grip I, I love gardening and that appeal to me. It looks like dirt and mud. And, uh, and then I started on the white. Well, you know, was a huge box. Oh, that's right. I got a huge ship and a, a white base, and I ordered 15 of them. In Germany, if you, if you get things from Germany, you have to 
it, it pays to get 15 at one time instead of one because the shipping's the same. So I, I took advantage of that and fed my addiction. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, first shipping about 75% of them were broken. Yeah, 13 out of 15 bags was master bits, and I cried. But I replaced them because these are mass produced. I mean, these, these are factory produced. It, it's not like studio bases. These are one of a kind. These, these you can find on eBay. Some of them are rare. This is a, a top one in Germany. They call this the artichoke base. Now, when I had a bad day at work, I'd come home and call it the hand grenade base. <laughs> uh, this was made by a company. What is that, Sarah? Hut? <laughs> oh, I think you, it's like Hutchin Rooter or something. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> but, um, and let's see, these are our uh, hut bases. And there's some person verb in there and some shirage. But that's all academic. So, any other questions? So, did you get any of the one of the kinds from it? Never. Never. No, no. Usually the dealers that deal with the one of a kind, they know what they have and they really pack them nice. And I've met some nice people online. It's like having 10 pals. And, and there's a guy named Tilo Strauss. I'd like to thank him, even though he's not here. He's my main dealer. And he provided me a sale with a lot of information, emails, pictures. So uh, I invited him, but I'm going to send him the information. And hopefully Where does he live? He lives in Germany. I don't know what's. I, I, I don't remember that time. I'm an airhead. <laughs> what advice do you have to someone who might want to start a similar collection? Where to begin and how? Pick out what you like. Uh, if you like German bases in particular, pick out something you like and uh, go for it. Yeah. Always trust your eye and your gut instinct. I, I buy by instinct. And I have bought some bad ones. <laughs> they look better in, in pictures than they do in person sometimes. And I, to tell you the truth, I didn't know about the, the centimeters and all that. And some of those photographs looked like they were that big, and I was excited when I got them. Oh, God. I take a lot of pictures of the garage still in mine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. questions are easier than talking. So, I mean, answering questions is easier than talking. So, mm. I mean, yes, so, uh, is it still ongoing or still collecting? Not as much because uh, it's critical mass, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I have three coming in the mail where it used to be 15 at a time, but I do have three new, three more bases coming in the mail mm -hmm. soon. But uh, I recently retired, so I have to watch the money. <laughs> so. Was it correct now? <laughs> yeah, really. All the place has a garage sale in the spring. It's a good garage sale. Hmm. And I might have some in there. Or I might sell them on eBay. <laughs> but the big base that's on the reception table where the food is, that's Jamie's too. And he did the mm -hmm. live. <laughs> 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 no, Tim, Tim, Tim did that one. Tim did that one. <laughs> Brian. The tables with the little bases are also his and then the one right in front of the folk art. Yeah, we Germanized this place. <laughs> <laughs>